If the two events are mutually exclusive, that means the two events cannot occur at the same time. So if you refer to the Venn diagram, this circle represents the probability for A and this one probability for B. For mutually exclusive event, the two circles cannot be intersect. So we lead to the addition rule number one. So when the two events A and B are mutually exclusive, the probability is probability A or B equals to probability A plus probability B. For example, in a survey, we have 8% of the respondents said their favorite ice cream flavor is cookies and cream. And then 6% like mint chocolate chip. If we select a person at random, find the probability that her or his favorite ice cream flavor is either cookie and cream or mint chocolate chip. So since a person can only choose one flavor of the ice cream, so to find the probability either A or B, we just need to add these two numbers. So we get the answer straight away, 14%. Addition rule 2. If A and B are not mutually exclusive, then probability A or B equals to probability of A plus probability of B minus with the intersect. Alright, so we have another situation. By referring to this Venn diagram, if the circle intersect but they are not mutually exclusive, that means to find the probability of A or B, you need to plus these two circles and you minus with the intersection. Example 9. In a hospital unit, there are 8 nurses and 5 physicians. 7 nurses and 3 physicians are females. If a staff person is selected, find the probability that the subject is a nurse or a male. For this example, you can make a table to illustrate the situation. So the table can be like this. So this one represents nurse and this one represents the physician. So first, we put the number for represent the total nurse and total physician. And then we separate them by gender, female and male. So we have 7 nurses which are females and we have 3 physicians which are female. So out of this number, you can get the nurse which are males and the physician which are male so the male nurse 8 minus 7 the male physicians 5 minus 3 so to find the probability that the subject is a nurse or a male so first you find the probability that is a nurse so the nurse 8 out of total members in this hospital so we have 8 over 13 and then for male we have uh, 1 plus 2 we have 3 over 13 the total male staff in this hospital and then to find the probability that the subject is a nurse or a male we have to find the male nurse first so the male nurse, we have 1 from the table. So to find the probability that the subject is a nurse or a male, or a male, so we plus the 8 over 13 with 3 over 13 and then you minus the male nurse which is 1 over 13, then you get the answer. Next, two events A and B are independent events if the fact that A occurs does not affect the probability of B occurring. So from these independent events, we lead to the first multiplication rule. So when two events are independent, so the probability of both occurring is 
probability. When two events are independent, the probability of both occurring is probability A and B equals probability A times probability B. Let us see the example. A coin is flipped and a die is rolled. So we have these two experiments are conducted independently and then we want to find the probability of getting a head or the, the coin and a four on the die. Alright, so for this example, we have to find the outcomes for each experiment, then we find the product. For the coin, to get a head, the probability is 1 over 2. Alright, because the coin has two faces and two possible outcomes, and a head will be half of the total outcomes. And then to get a 4 on the die, since a die has 6 faces, therefore to get a 4, we will have 1 over 6. Therefore, to get a head on the coin and a 4 on the die will be multiplication of both fractions. So we have 1 over 2 times 1 over 6, so we get 1 over 12. Example 11. An urn contains 2 red balls, 5 blue balls, and 3 white balls. A ball is selected and its color is not. And then it is replaced. That means after we pick the ball and not the color, we put it back to the urn. A second ball is selected and its color is not. Find the probability of each of the following events. Alright? So for this situation, whenever we take the ball out of the urn and we note the color, the first, second, and third balls are independent attempts. Therefore, to find the probability, let's say selecting three blue balls, okay? So to select the first three balls are blue, so we find the probability of taking one blue ball first. So the probability of blue ball will be 5 divided by the total balls so we get 5 over 10 which is equivalent to 1 over 2 so to find the probability of selecting 3 blue balls with replacement the answer will be 1 over 2 times 1 over 2 times another 1 over 2 the probability for each blue ball are the same since we replace the ball again and again. And then for B, select one white ball and then one red ball. Okay, so for one white ball, the probability is 3 over 10. And then for red ball, the probability is 2 over 10 or equivalent to 1 over 5. So for B, the answer would be B, W, and then red, 3 over 10 times 1 over 5. So we get the answer 3 over 50. And then the next one, selecting 2 blue balls and then 1 white ball. So 2 blue ball and 1 white ball, the probability is 1 over 2 times 1 over 2 times 3 over 10. Then we get the answer. 3 over 40. The next one is when the outcomes or occurrence of the first event affects the outcomes or occurrence of the second event. So the events will be known as dependent. So this one leads to the second multiplication rule. So when two events are dependent, then the probability of both occurring is probability A and B equals probability of A times probability of B given that A already happened. So let us see the example.
Example 12. Three cards are drawn from an ordinary deck and not replaced. So this is the keyword for dependent case. Find the probability of these events. Okay. So we know that an ordinary deck consists of 52 cards. So whenever we draw a card out of this deck, the total will decrease one by one. So let's say we consider the probability of getting three jacks. So we know that originally there are four jacks in this deck. So if we take one by one out, then the probability would be 4 over 52 for the first jack times 3 over 51 for the second jack and 2 over 50 for the third jack. And we times these three fractions and we get the answer. And then the next one, find the probability getting an ace, a king and a queen in order. Okay, so similarly, we will have four ace in this deck, four king and four queen. So, the answer would be for ace, 4 over 52 times for king, 4 over 51. Assuming we already took one card out of this deck. And then the next one for queen, 4 over 50. And this is the answer. Then similarly to the next one, so getting a club or a clover, spade and a heart. So each of these shapes consists of 13 cards. So the answer will be 13 over 52 cards times 13 over 51 times 13 over 50 then you get the answer. And then lastly for 3 clubs, the solution will be 13 over 52 times 12 over 51 since we already took one club out of this deck so both will reduce by one and then for the third club 11 over 50 so we times these three fractions then you get the answer so this is your reference let's say we have another example example 13 box 1 contains two red balls and one blue ball Box 2 contains 3 blue balls and 1 red ball. A coin is tossed. If it falls head up, box 1 is selected and a ball is drawn. If it falls tails up, box 2 is selected and a ball is drawn. Find the probability of selecting a red ball. Okay, for this example, drawing a ball from the box and tossing a coin are dependent events. Therefore, we need to make a table to illustrate the station. So let's say this is the outcome from the coin, head or tail. And then, if we get a head on the coin, we need to draw a ball from the box 1. So the probability of getting red balls for box 1 is 2 over 3. And then for the blue ball, is 1 over 3. So for box 2, to get the blue balls and the red balls are for red 1 over 4, for blue 3 over 4. Alright, so to find the probability of selecting a red ball for these depending events, we need to do one by one. So for head on the coin and red balls the probability will be 1 over 2 times 2 over 3 then we get 1 over 3 and then for second box with red balls is drawn would be 1 over 2 times 1 over 4 so we get 1 over 8 so to get the answer for the probability of selecting a red ball, so we need to class these two cases, then we get 
the answer which is 11 over 24